everyone, welcome back to Magic Time. I'm your host, Thomas, and I'm here today to talk to you about my top 10 favorite Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignons. Now, this is a little bit of a difficult topic for me, seeing that I live here in the Napa Valley and um, have been able to taste hundreds of Napa Valley Cabernets and had great experiences at so many different properties. Also, the last 17 years of being in the wine industry, I have countless experiences with old aged bottles of Napa Cab that blew my mind. So this list is not to be taken um, too seriously in the fact that a lot of these wines that I have put on the list could be like swapped out for something else. And I intentionally left out like certain cult status wines that most of us won't even be able to ever even taste or might just like see once in a while. Like there's no Screaming Eagle on the list or Har Harlan or anything like that. Although those wines in, in my particular opinion wouldn't even make the top 10 anyway. So um, that's just me. Anyways, um, Please subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. What are your top 10 favorite Napa Valley Cabernets? What do you like? What have you experienced? And, and what should I have put on my list? Um, number one on the list, I put Dunn Howl Mountain. These are no in particular order, by the way. I put Dunn Howl Mountain. Now, Randy Dunn, he's been making Cabernet Sauvignon up on Howl Mountain for many decades now and is one of the pioneers of Howl Mountain Cabernet. And he's so traditional in the way and the style he makes the wine. In fact, when I went and visited them, they told me a story about a time when Mike, the son of Randy, um, came through with a wine, I think it was in 2014, and the wine had ticked over 14% alcohol, I think it was 14.2 alcohol. And uh, Randy had tasted it and asked him how much alcohol was in it, and Mike admitted that it was over the 14% alcohol level, and Randy made him de-alcoholize the wine to under 14%. So super backward, kind of traditional Napa Valley, low alcohol, high acid, good tannin, and a wine that'll age in your cellar forever. Can't tell you how many times I've tasted old aged Dunn Howl Mountain Cabernet and it's blown my mind. So Dunn, seek it out. Number two I put on the list, um, Chapelet Pritchard Hill. Um, Pritchard Hill is an iconic wine. The Chapelets have been making wine here in Napa Valley since the 60s and kind of established Pritchard Hill as a, one of the premier growing regions in all of Napa Valley. And uh, they actually own the name Pritchard Hill and there was a movement at one time from all the producers up there to make that an AVA name and the Chapelets actually protected that and uh, went to, to court to protect that. <laughs> um, great wine, it's been made by Philip Titus uh, for 30 years, great winemaker, good friend, and Chapelet Pritchard Hill is just delicious, super high, high toned acidity, good richness to the wine, very elegant style. It's not a globby kind of rich style like you might find in certain parts of Oakville, but like really just delicate and rich and beautiful. Um, number two, number three, I put on the list Tur Turnbull's Fortuna Vineyard Cabernet Sauvignon. Now Turnbull is a winery that I actually worked for and was fortunate enough to lead their, their um, tasting room for two years as the lead educator. And um, I love their wines. I fell in love with them. They're 100% estate wines. And the Turnbull Fortuna Vineyard is on the east side of Oakville, backed by Screaming Eagle, Rudd, and uh, right below Dollaval. Just amazing property. And um, their Cabernet Fortuna is always very beautiful red fruit very silky on the palate, very good minerality tones to the wine, and uh, subtle hints of herb, just beautiful, beautiful wine. I think they scored 100 points with it one or, once or twice, and um, just one of my favorite wines in Napa Valley. Grace Family, so I put Grace on the list, and this one kind of notches into that little bit of a, a uh, cult status wine. Uh, Dick Grace planted this like two acre property uh, many, many years ago, and he planted it to Cabernet Sauvignon, with cuttings from the Beauchet Vineyard. So a uh, really great vineyard by Freemark Abbey Beauchet. And uh, he used cuttings for that. And just a remarkably dense and powerful wine, but with pure elegance and silk. Just really silky on the palate, long finish, gorgeous aromatics. Um, next one that couldn't be left off the list is Heights Martha's Vineyard. So Heights Martha's Vineyard is iconic. The 74 Heights Martha's Vineyard, people say that might be the best wine that's ever been produced here in Napa Valley. But um, I've had the opportunity to taste the wine many, many times. And there's just like this incredible nuance to the wine. It's almost like this menthol character or eucalyptus character that is distinctly Martha's. And um, it never goes away. It's always there in almost every bottling. And just elegant, um, rich, but not too heavy, good acidity, very well balanced. Um, the oak regiment's always really well balanced on Heights Martha's Vineyard and just iconic, iconic wine. One that I definitely will collect. 
Um, number, uh, the next one on the list is Dominus. Now this is Christian Wex's project, the owner of Chateau Petrus, and um, he has a winery in just right across the street from downtown Yontville, and it's a beautiful modern winery. Um, they don't do too much vegetation there, so I've never been to the property, but I've had many, many bottles of Dominus over the years. And uh, 1990, 1989, up all the way up till the present date, and just stunning, stunning wines. Um, kind of Bordeaux style, um, richer, but also um, plenty of tannin and acid and very well balanced, really well, well made for the cellar. Um, the next on the list I put is Barnett Rattlesnake Vineyard, um, one of my favorite wines on Spring Mountain. And I went to a wine tasting one time um, in San Francisco where there was a couple hundred different producers of Napa Valley Cabernet and I was pouring wine for another winery and I got to go around the room and taste all the wines in the room. I didn't taste them all but I tasted a lot of them and I can tell you that was my favorite wine of the night, Barnett Rattlesnake Vineyard. Uh, next one on the, on the list is Cardinal. So Cardinal is a um, Jackson family winery now. Um, he's owned it for many years now. Cardinal is on the valley floor in Oakville and Chris Carpenter makes their wine, also makes La Coya. And Cardinal is kind of this blend of Cabernets from the different hillside properties or mountainside properties that is that are part of that umbrella, that Jackson family umbrella. I know they have um, grapes coming from Howe Mountain, from Spring Mountain, from Mount Beater. Might have some Valley Flora fruit in there as well. But Cardinal was always one for me early on in my wine career that was just ultra, ultra silky and smooth on the palate. Rich and powerful and definitely a wine that can age, but just just so silky, right? Just velvety on the palate. So I love, love, love Cardinal. Um, let's see. Last one on the list, and not least, CV. I love CV's Cabernet. Now this is one's a little bit understated and don't, doesn't have all the flash of a lot of wineries around the Napa Valley. But CV is a small family-owned property way back, kind of by the Con Valley back there, and um, about 5,000 case production. Uh, Melka has been their consultant for over 20 years and I was lucky enough to go to a 25 year vertical and taste every single wine at CV. And um, since I think it was like 1990 all the way up to 2015, this was a couple years ago, and all the wines, every single one of them showed incredible nuance and complexity and um, just, just really beautiful wines and they age and evolve immaculately in the cellar. And uh, Jim Duane is heading the wine program there right now, one of the most intelligent, kind of really cool guys in the Napa Valley, um, great winemaker. Um, so those are my, I think I got 10 of them there. Those are my favorites. There, there could have been lots of them that could have been on the list, like Dalaval, Maya, or uh, like I said, like Harlan or Screaming Eagle or something like that, or you know, Spotswood or Diamond Creek or you name it. There's so many, and like all the wines that are from Andy Beckstoffer's Tokalon Vineyard, which I didn't mention Tokalon, which are some of the very best Cabernets in Napa. But um, I couldn't put them all in the top 10. Those are just my favorites. And um, comment, subscribe, put your top 10 Cabernets uh, on the list, and um, we'll have a dialogue. Cheers.